Hi everyone, and welcome to the Flying Heritage and Combat Armor Museum's Tank Talk on the M4A1 Sherman tank. In this series, we have two parts, and the first part will be about the restoration of the Sherman tank, and then the second part will be about the unit markings on our tank as well. So let's begin. Part one, the restoration. Um, it's presented by me, Hector Medell, and I am an armor maintenance mechanic here at the Flying Heritage and Combat Armor Museum. I work on all the tanks, and the Sherman tank is my favorite one. So our Sherman tank restoration. This is our Sherman tank that you see in our museum. Um, this is what it looked like before the restoration. The restoration was done by um, the CNC Military Services by Carl Brown. And what they do is they provide props and vehicles for the film industry and they also restore things. This is an absolute beauty of a picture. You can see just the condition that our Sherman tank was in before restoration. And it wasn't actually, it wasn't all that bad. There are a few little things here and there, but one of the main things that I wanted to point out in this picture was if you look on the hole itself, there's these like weld dots or these weld marks that were there on the hole. The suspension was an E9 suspension, so the tracks had duck bills on either side. And to accommodate that, they just used spacers to widen that out. And then because they widened that out, the Sherman also got fenders. And that is where those dots came from. Here is the rear view. And you can kind of see it's not in that great a shape, but it's pretty good as far as what you know a tank from world war ii would be here's a really really cool picture that i absolutely love because you can kind of see just the silhouette of the box bottom with the cast hole welded on top of that which is then in, sandwiched in between the turret and it's just a really cool shot that i that i love here is the restoration company pulling out the one piece final drive and the, the turret ring. And here is what I was talking about with that E9 suspension. You can see these spacers were welded in and then that would extend the tracks out by just a little bit enough to where they can put duck bills, which were these track connectors to give it more traction in the snow and mud. Here is the, the turret taken off of the tank and set down on the ground. You can see it's in okay shape. A few, you know, a couple of things that need to be buffed out. But other than that, it's looking really good. And the, the turret basket. I want you to um, pay close attention to the actual turret basket itself and what it looks like. And I'll show you a slide in just a few of the before and after. Here's the engine and uh, the track pads. So this is this shot's really cool because it shows um, the Sherman tank hull in this jig. And what you were able to do when you put the Sherman in this jig, you were able to rotate it 360 degrees. And what that does is you're able to weld. It's really hard welding upside down. It's almost impossible um, with this type of welding that they're doing. So what's nice is they can rotate the turret as they need to get on each side. Here is the final drive and the transmission sandblasted and rebuilt, ready to go. Here is all of the parts sandblasted and primed. And on the Sherman, you can see that the hole has been um, rad oxide primered. And you can see some more parts. You can see in the restoration company, all of their engines and parts and crates of everything that a Sherman tank would need. This is a really cool picture. Um, it shows the Sherman engine um, as it's being restored and rebuilt. Our Sherman has an aircraft engine in it. They were surplus in the beginning of the war, so they decided to put those engines in the Shermans. And ours is a Continental R975. And you can see here in this picture, this is just one of the jugs that the, that the engine had. It had a total of nine. 
and you can just see kind of the restoration process and the craftsmanship that it took to, to restore one of these. And here is the engine completely built and assembled, ready to go on an engine stand. Here is a picture of the Sherman primed and ready. You can take note of the brand new suspension and, and bogey wheels. A few slides ago we were talking about the, the turret basket and the condition from before and after, and here it is with all the metalwork and the fabrication that it took to make this critical piece look so good. The level of craftsmanship and fabrication put into this ring and basket is extraordinary. One of the most critical pieces in a tank itself is the actual turret ring and for them to take it out to get everything fixed, cleaned up, repaired, refurbished and rebuilt is extraordinary. Here's another picture of the turret basket and ring and you can just see the level of craftsmanship like I was talking before. You know, I just can't get over of how beautiful this looks. Like this is an excellent excellent fabrication and well job. Onto the engine bay. So the engine would sit directly into those motor mounts on the opposite sides of each other. And on the very top left hand side kind of you had those four holes. Those holes would be used for your fuel valves on and off. So you had four separate fuel tanks on a Sherman and you were able to turn on and off um, each of the fuel tanks. Here is that same engine bay we just looked at in the previous slide, fully restored. Completely painted. You got your oil coolers in there. You have some electrical lines. Everything's looking pretty good. You have your fuel canister. It's looking really, really good. This is a picture of a complete engine bay without its engine. You have fuel lines, you have electrical, you have all the fire hose lines. So everything is looking so good and white. It's just clean and beautiful. You are currently looking inside a Sherman hull if you were in the co-driver's position. They don't have the, the turret basket in installed quite just yet. And one of the very first things I think you'll notice is just how bright white it is. They painted the insides of the tank white, so then that way it would feel like you had more space than what you did. And when you get the turret basket in there, the gun, you have five people in there with all of their supplies, it gets pretty cramped. So they thought, hey, let's paint it white and be easier, look cleaner. And so also in this picture too, you can see right in the center of where your drive line would be from the engine and it would go all the way down to your transmission. And that's why the Sherman tank had such a high silhouette was because the engine in the rear was placed so high and the drive line would actually from the engine to the transmission would be pointed down. Here is them putting the actual engine into the, the engine bay. And with the engine in, all we had to do was get some track on it, and they're using the original track bar to tension the track. Here's the turret with the applique armor on it and primed, ready to go. Here is the commander's cupola. They just did a wonderful job on the paint as well. And there is the gun barrel for our Sherman tank. So after the restoration and the delivery of our Sherman tank to the museum, the next step was picking out its unit markings. What's so cool about these three photographs is these are the photographs that were actually sent to Paul Allen for him to choose what our tank was going to look like. And there was kind of some discussion here and there, and they came up with Africa. There was one in Normandy, and then there was the one in the Netherlands on the right hand side and you can kind of see the boomerang silhouette and picture of what it of what it was going to look like and the reason why he picked boomerang was because after the war we sold a lot of shermans off and a bunch of shermans went to the dutch army in the netherlands 
So he thought it would be a good idea since our tank actually came from the Netherlands, why don't we paint it in a tank battalion's colors that, that served there? And here is the stenciling in the paint shop and what they were going to do. An interesting thing on the, the paint scheme and is on the stars, everything on the stars, all that stuff is correct, but on the lettering boomerang itself, they added just a little bit of boomerang. There are no known photos of boomerang itself, so they just added that in as kind of a kind of a neat thing. And here is boomerang as you see it today. Um, I'm driving it for Tinktoberfest in front of a large crowd. And thank you for watching and supporting the Flying Heritage and Combat Armor Museum. Um, join us next time for the second part in the series where we actually discuss the paint and unit markings of our Sherman Tank Boomerang itself. Thanks again.